you very much indeed. Now, uh, better late than never. Chinese audiences will finally be able to watch the animated Studio Ghibli classic, My Neighbour Totoro. Let's just uh, show you a, a clip. You'll probably be familiar with the images. <laughs> Well, My Neighbour Totoro is going to be uh, put out uh, on uh, release in cinemas 30 years after the original uh, release. The film follows the story of two sisters who befriend playful spirits in their house and the nearby forest, including uh, Totoro. Despite not being screened in China until now, uh, it has a cult following. <laughs> Let's, uh, that was Totoro, I think. Uh, let's uh, speak to Beth Webb, a film critic who counts My Neighbour Totoro as uh, one of her all-time favourite films. Also, Kerry Allen is a China analyst for BBC Monterey. Uh, welcome to you both. Do you know, I've never seen it, but the images are very familiar, Beth. Now, now why is that? I mean, is it that it's just become one of these iconic and seeps into some world culture? No, that's exactly it. Um, he's become, well, first become an icon and uh, a mascot of sorts for Studio Ghibli, which is the Japanese animation house that we sort of familiarised by comparing to Disney uh, over here, but in fact is, is a completely different... Um, it's, it's sort of a powerhouse within the animation world. Uh, and you look at the characters and there is a sort of childhood innocence about all of this, isn't, isn't there? I mean, is that what defines the Ghibli production house, do you think? Absolutely. Now, Hayao Miyazaki is very much a man of his morals, so he's um, very precious about what's shown on screen. He likes his themes to be universal. He likes his characters to be relatable and sometimes cuddly. Um, and it's just a, a contagious sort of multi-generational feeling that's kind of transcended over the last 30 years. So, Kerry, why, why hasn't it been shown? Well, in China, there are these backlogs anyway for foreign films, foreign TV programs to actually make it into the country, and even more so in recent months because China has put restrictions on the airtime for foreign broadcasts. It's introduced copyright laws which say that only certain online streamers can show these shows. But at the same time, this this film has been popular with Chinese people. I mean, 10 years ago in China, it was very, very common to see on the streets people selling DVDs. And, I mean, still now, um, I mean, up until today, um, mass merchandise related to the film, even though, I mean, look, people have seen this film, but they've seen it unofficially. So, uh, so people are saying today they're, they're getting pictures of their tickets, they're going to the cinemas, and they're very, very excited about going to see it, but many of them have seen it. Uh, and does this all date back to, I mean, the animus between China and Japan, I suppose most recently, in, 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 the, in the Second World War? Do you think that's a, that's a part of it? Oh, yes, absolutely, yes. Um, but, um, but, yeah, ten years ago, programmes like Sailor Moon were popular. I mean, China didn't really have as much exposure with Disney um, it, it, in the country, so, um, so it had a lot of Japanese books being brought over into shops um, unofficially. People were reading them um, because the, the kanji means that they're quite similar, so they were trying to learn Japanese in order to read these books. Um, and same with films, they could understand it to some extent, and they were very popular. That, that world view that uh, Ghibli has, uh, has put forward, I mean, does that come through in all their, their productions? Is there that same spirit in the way that Disney perhaps hasn't always maintained that same trajectory? I think as, as much, yes. Um, what's different about Many Neighbor Totoro is it's set in the current day, whereas previously Miyazaki tended to emerge himself in more fantastical worlds. Um, but as I say, his, his kind of stubborn moral mind is, is really it brings out in all of his work, absolutely. Uh, and uh, when you look at the, the world that it, this is set in, it's back in the 80s, it's not too much longer after the, you know, the nuclear explosions and the, and the, and the atomic bombs mm. in, in Japan. Is that very much uh, the result of a man who is the creation of those wartime memories, trying to provide a much better, more utopian view of life, do you think? I would imagine so, yes. The release of My Neighbor Totoro was actually part of a double bill with um, Asaya Takahata's Grave of the Fireflies, which is a lot more steeped in, in kind of, it was more of a product of the time. Um, but then Miyazaki has very publicly spoken out about Japanese aggressions during the war as well, which I think might have helped the case as to why it's, it's come onto screens today in China. Um, so I think, yes, absolutely. 
Kerry, um, people are sort of excited about this they're being officially released, but uh, has there been any comment from the Chinese authorities about why it's taken 30 years to do this? No, not at all, no. Um, I mean, the, the fact this film's come out, um, people aren't really surprised that they're saying, you know, that it's great. And actually, media in the country, they're, they're very much saying, finally, this has come out. Um, so it's almost a bit of kind of... I mean, that they, they know, I mean, a lot of people have seen this film, that um, the fact they're saying this. Does this mean a windfall for Ghibli, though, that they'll be able to get the merchandising rights now? Ooh, I'm not mm. sure about that. Well, with so many, with so many bootleg um, copies on the, on, on the streets, do you think it was partly driven by them? I think so. I mean, there might have been as well. I mean, it might have been that this film has been in a queue for ages. I mean, I've seen domestic productions have a backlog of five to six years in order to make it on screens, and people have been critical in the country about this and saying that, um, that a lot of these shows, they might be topical, and by the time they come out, they're outdated. Okay. Huge market, of course. Kerry, Beth, thank you very much uh, indeed. Uh, we'll leave you with the thought of those uh, images of uh, uh, Totoro. Our main story today, of course, is that uh, Theresa May is leaving Brussels. Uh, having had uh, any chance of any sort of concessions on her deal uh, rebuffed by uh, Brussels, she nonetheless, in the last few minutes, though, has uh, said that she thinks there is movement uh, and that there will be more negotiations. We are back with another edition in a few minutes' time. I hope to see you then. Bye-bye.